Greetings and salutations, Dota fans. Welcome in. We're down to the finals of our Eastern Division. IG taking on VG and Victus Gaming taking on VG Gaming. Now, it's been a long road for both of these teams. Invictus Gaming finished in second place overall in our Eastern Group Stage standings. But VG, well, they had to take the long road. And, well, not quite as long as they could have, I suppose. They finished down in third place. They met the winner of Tong Fu to DK in our bubble race playoffs that kicked off yesterday and got the best of DK 2-1 in a thrilling best of three series. Now matching up against IG, a team many consider to be probably the favorite throughout the entire remaining playoff tournament. LGD, of course, already having direct qualified their way to Vegas. Let's take a look at how these two teams stack up, starting with Invictus Gaming. As mentioned, they had a very strong showing coming out 6-1 and one in second place in our overall group stage standings. They are led by YYF and off lane with Howe on carry, Ferrari 430 in mid, Banana on the support jungle position, and Faith in hard support. But their test here today going to be a team which honestly matches up well against pretty much everyone and happens to be on one hell of a tear, as mentioned. Having gotten the best of DK 2-1 yesterday, that's VG Gaming. VG has really been looking good down the stretch. Um, they've had a couple, a couple of, uh, a, a couple of ups and downs. We'll put it that way. There have been times when they've really looked strong and they've kind of fallen off, and maybe looked a little shaky. But overall, they've been able to hold it together under the tutelage of Fenrir, the support jungler. ROTK, of course, off lane, super in mid. 2-2 on the carry position and FY on hard support. They finished 5-2. and two. Their only two losses coming to LGD and IG in the regular group stage. So they're going to be looking for a little bit of revenge here today and looking to punch their tickets to Vegas to our grand finals coming up January 7th through the 10th at CES at Caesars Palace. Can't wait to get this series underway, and it will be a good one. Best of five on the way. And I'm your host, Aaron A.C. Chambers. I'll be joined, as always, by Ben Merlini-Wu. It'll be Nahaz Dota lending his uh, support on the stats side of things. Can't wait to get things underway. So settle in, grab something to eat, grab something to drink. But either way, grab your pants because we got a lot of action on the way. Best of five action kicking off. The draft already underway here in game one. We'll be right back here on the HyperX D2L. And as we can see, the draft already underway. The kickoff game of a best of five that will determine the fate of one of these teams. One will go home. The other, well, they're coming across the sea. They're coming to Las Vegas to join us for our grand finals coming up in January. Vici versus Invictus Gaming. And this is a series I think all of us have really been looking forward to, especially after Vici's standout performance against DK just last night. Vici leading off with a Visage and Clockwork pick. And Invictus going to go ahead and grab up a very fast Alchemist as well as a Rubik in second position. To break down the draft and all of the action, as always, as he has throughout the entire tournament so far, welcome in once again, Ben Merlini Wu. And Ben, you and I got a great look at Vici last night, and they are playing ridiculously well. I mean, let's be honest, throughout uh, our four best of threes yesterday, you and I actually kind of poked fun about it. The fact that we had three of those four series go all three games, and there really weren't a lot of close games in those series that went all three games. There were a lot of lopsided wins and losses. But Vici, when they look good and when they're able to get off to a solid start, able to get off to a good start that will allow them to interrupt a team like Invictus, which really just plays one of the best grind-you-out kind of games in the business, that's going to be the absolute key for them if they want to get off to a, to a, uh, to a solid beginning here in this long, extended best-of-five series. Yeah, Vici has just been really consistently uh, performing well lately, and their series versus DK was pretty impressive. And even the game that they lost, they still had quite the advantage most of the game. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that's something that we talked a lot about yesterday. It's that when it comes to the first, say, 15 minutes of a game, 20 minutes even, 
Vici has one of the best in the business, and that's not just to say, oh, they're solid, whatever. They don't make a lot of mistakes, but they also always seem to have a very well-planned out, well-thought-out game plan that allows them to begin to dissect the map and just knock the enemy team out of whatever rhythm, whatever game plan they happen to have set. And Vici, in doing so, even when it doesn't work out, they don't tend to give a lot away any time they happen to fail on that front. So they're always in a decent position, but it's that transition from the 20 to 40 minute mark where a lot of teams can get one over on you. And up against Invictus Gaming, again, arguably the best team or one of the best teams uh, going right now in terms of just taking whatever the status quo happens to be, taking whatever advantage they happen to have and slowly extending it, just grinding you out mechanically, grinding you out through decision making. They're as good as it gets, so Vici has to make sure in every game they play here tonight, they don't give IG an inch because they will take a mile. I think that IG is going to be a more difficult opponent than DK for Vichy because Invictus is slightly more unpredictable. As we saw from DK, Burning just did the same thing every game. Uh, Safe Flame, Carry Farm with Midas on different heroes, yeah, but pretty much just the same play style and Mushi playing aggressively and then his supports just falling around Mushi trying to make things happen and occasionally protecting Burning. And IG, I think they have a wider variety of strategies and... Um, I also don't think that their carry player is how is uh, as passive as Burning is. So I think that if Vichy wants to bring the fight to IG, they're gonna be it's gonna be met with more, much more resistance than what DK gave them. Yeah, talking about how as an example, um, he's had a lot of success on Luna throughout the entire Eastern Division. We've seen Invictus run Luna to an unbelievable success rate so far, and I'm actually a little surprised that she isn't banned, especially through the second banning phase. Uh, by Vici. I mean, obviously, a player like Hal is going to be excellent Five on a number of carries, remaining. but um, just that hero in particular suits his play style so well, and you make an excellent point. He's not as passive as Bernie. Time. He's a guy who will start to show up to fights, who will get involved in early smoke ganks and even in early dives, so on and so forth. And we saw uh, we saw that put to good effect in terms of uh, Vici Gaming stumbling a little bit against DK. They can fall prey to that kind of a style if you're able to just overwhelm them early on instead of allowing them to dissect the map. But Vici is going to go ahead and grab Super his Storm Spirit. We saw Super on Storm Spirit yesterday. Played an excellent Storm Spirit for what it was worth. And uh, the, you know, the box score didn't necessarily indicate that as much as it could, but his positioning, his awareness, his ability to initiate fights, especially with this team. Again, this is going to be another reach kind of a lineup that they're running. Clockwork and Storm offer you so much initiation potential. You're going to have a lot of burst damage output uh, between Visage, Storm, and Nyx Assassin in Ten particular. Seconds. And you're up against two relatively squishy heroes early on in Rubik and Luna already. Luna Five in particular, remaining. extremely susceptible to ganks, does not have any inherent escape mechanism, and is very, very item-dependent in terms of being able to stand up to any kind of pressure and bites on her terms. So I really like the Storm Spirit pick up there from Vici. I think it's going to synergize extremely well with their game plan to hold Luna down and not allow her to scale well into the mid and late game. Yeah, and it looks like Venomator has kind of fallen off. Nick Stetson seems to have gained a lot of popularity in the past few days, and if you can hit them, Pales, and why not? He's just as good as he was before if you can hit that point targeted stun. And the carry for choice for IG is Luna. Um, it's a pretty solid carry. We don't know what VG is going to be yet. Um, maybe something standard like a gyrocopter. Not sure. They could do Bristle, too. Uh, Weaver's still... Oh, wait, no, Bristle's banned out. Bristle's yep. banned out in the first phase. What? Yeah, I know. We've been seeing a lot of uh, attention being given to, the, to our little buddy, the Bristleback. And so I played a number of times yesterday. Weaver's available here for Vici. I actually think that would be excellent with this sort of a lineup. They have uh, a front four already that are Ten just seconds, excellent at creating space and taking fights on their own terms, being able to, again, play that Five style, seconds, which Vici has, has given Vici so much success, a dissection, kind of surgical style, trying Five to take teams apart little by bed. little. And if you add in a Weaver, who certainly he's going to be able to scale well into the late game, he's great at split push, he's great with mobility, I think that could fit in well. And uh, we'll see if Invictus wants to ban that out now as they do have the option. But I hope they're going to go and take out the Clinks. So uh, we actually saw some really solid Clinks play yesterday too. So it looks like Invictus has been doing their homework. Yeah, they probably were watching the series in between BG and DK, and Siler just played an extraordinary clinks in that game. And Siler, he has really been fitting in well with. 
species flying up there have been a relative uh, large amount of roster reshuffles in the eastern scene and for example like Zo hasn't really uh, fit in with Tongfu he seems like he's doing a better job at the support but it's been a few months and he still hasn't meshed completely uh, in but Siler seems to just be working really well with his supports FY and Fenrir and uh, doing his carry duties Taking a look at the lanes and the way they're shaping up so far for Invictus, they actually do have the option of running a very push-centric kind of a lineup. They could run it offensively or defensively, depending on what they're anticipating out of Vici. Uh, they're going to grab Puck, so that'll be their mid one would imagine. But when you look at Vici, you see an early clockwork pick. Clock really does crave that solo lane. Not very often you're going to see a clockwork get a solo solo mid preference over top of a Storm Spirit. So if they're anticipating a clockwork there, with a Leshrac, a Luna, and maybe you send the Rubik on... Uh, on into the uh, um, defensive tri lane, you have the option of just pushing down a very early tier one. And we actually saw that yesterday. Our good friend Nahaz pointed out we saw a tier one drop in one of the fastest times recorded in, in uh, competitive Dota history with a lineup very similar to that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, IG does have the potential to just take a lot of towers early. Really. Vici doesn't have the best anti push, like Cog is. Okay, so is uh, Gyrocopter with his flag, but that's pretty mediocre spells to deal with the IG push. So if IG get off to an early start, it's going to be very difficult for VG to come back, especially an early blink dagger on Puck that's going to shut down the Storm Spirit and Nexus Assassin pretty hard. Uh, this reminds me of a lineup I saw a lot earlier today uh, Puck versus the Nexus Assassin. I forget which game it was. I cast it a lot in the past few days, but uh, yeah, Puck, he has to make a lot happen with his blink dagger. Um, maybe even skip treads if you have to because if you wait too long um, pretty much if you wait for the storm to get his orc in, the puck is just going to die over and over and you really have to keep the storm down before he gets his orc in. Uh, they don't have a life stealer so the gank is not that potent but then again he does have to deal with the Nyx Assassin Yeah, I really do think that uh, what IG is going to be looking to uh, I mean this lineup really is just going to work so well in taking early fights under enemy towers. Um, when you talk about Luna she is a hero who scales extremely well into the late game, and you can play her as nothing but a hard farming carry, but she actually fits in very well with any kind of a lineup that does want to take fights early once she hits level 6, just the power of loose and beam glaives. I mean, her entire skill set basically lends her very, very well to any kind of a guns forward kind of pushing lineup. Then you have Ferrari on the puck. He's going to give that reach that you always want, the potential to zone the enemy off of their own tower, make it difficult for them to feel... Uh, very safe in a defensive position. And then YYF, who can drop the acid spray. I would imagine um, that'll be a, a pretty heavy focus in his skill build just because of how well this lineup is going to work in terms of just joining his five early on and trying to force VG to be always on the back foot, always trying to find some kind of an opening to take a fight. The problem for them is, or the problem for IG, is that VG does have an excellent lineup of that with the Storm and the Clock, and they're going to have to account for the Nyx Assassin most certainly. And what we've been seeing more and more is Nyx Assassin players just say, you know what, I don't need the Impale damage. I'm just going to use Vendetta just to get in a position, try to hit a two-man Impale, then let my long range, my, my, my heavy hitters, the Clockwork and the Storm Spirit, jump on you after that, and then I can worry about doing damage with Mana Burn. Yeah, that's exactly right. It seems like the Impale nerf has actually like nerfed Vendetta mostly, um, and Vendetta just used to simply get in position, and then once you get your Blink Dagger, you don't necessarily need to use a Vendetta, but uh, it's primarily just used as scouting at this uh, stage in Nyx Assassin's game. Yeah, I very much agree. The um, What's funny, it, arguably the best use I've seen from Vendetta, say very, very early on before a mobility item, before a Force Staff, before a Blink Dagger, what have you, is courier sniping. Um, actually seen uh, some very... Um, that's worked out quite well. If you're just scouting behind enemy lines, happen to spot the courier Vendetta into its return path, and then you can usually one-shot it uh, with Vendetta. So, and not to say it has zero utility, but it definitely isn't what it used to be, which is at level 6, Nyx could just take off across the map and just try to pick off any squishy he happened to run across. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly a lot more difficult for him to hit that um, impale. And a lot of people just like run circles around the Nyx, and Nyx is like casting, canceling, casting, canceling, casting, canceling. And it's pretty, pretty funny to watch. Yeah. So moving ahead here while we wait for uh, – I saw the letters WC pop up once or twice, so somebody probably – uh, relieving some biological pressure right before we get this best of five underway. And certainly when there's a best of five, it's uh, easy to understand why that would be an ongoing concern. But as we wait, um, give me your scouting report on the teams themselves. I mean, Vici, you and I again got to see an action. Haven't seen IG, at least in D2L play, in quite some time. But IG coming down the stretch, they looked ridiculously strong in our group stage. And I was having a brief Twitter back and forth with uh, one of our viewers 
And honestly, I think this first game is going to mean everything to Vici. They're just a, they're a team who thrives on momentum. I think if Vici can take this first game off of IG, they're going to be in a great position to maybe take the entire series in three or four games. If if they fall behind 0-1 to IG though in a best of five, I think IG ends up taking the series overall though. Yeah, um, VC did take a 3-0 series versus LGD China. They beat LGD China, I think, 2-1 the other day. They beat two, DK 2-1 two, yesterday. So VC has just been looking really, really strong uh, lately. And it seems like in the best of five format, it actually has a matter that it's gone to best of five. Um, in most of the time, for example, last night's Vici versus LGD, most of the DreamHack, uh, most of the DreamHack series were three zeros. So I'm not a huge fan of the best of five format. I think it's a lot of stress for the players, especially if they've played series uh, prior to the day. Um, and a lot of teams, they a lot of times they don't even have three different strategies, and it's just mostly the same strategy executed over and over again. But it definitely does give the teams who have more or more veteran players who can adapt to the opposing teams' play styles, uh, drafts, and bans, uh, and as well as just uh, having some new strategies of your own, definitely caters towards them. But that's actually a fascinating point you make, and I'd like for you to elaborate on that while we wait. Um for our, our last player to join as a former professional player. Um, no, talk to me a little bit about that. Like you said, you feel like in a many in many cases, um, teams are a little pigeonholed, at least in, in a given point in their play style. So, like, what advantages, if any, do you feel like a best of five does afford, say, an experienced veteran team, a team that's been together a long time or a team that is maybe extra creative in the way they approach the, uh, approach the game? Well, it's much less likely for, like, huge, huge underdog to uh, take a cheese win through, like, a pug death strategy or something like that. So I think it uh, definitely favors it favors a better team, most certainly, but it also favors uh, teams that, yeah, if, uh, teams that are really good at adapting their strategy for even the best of three series that we saw yesterday. DK didn't change their strategy at all, and um, Vici switched their, like, Windrunner carry into a Clinks carry, who was a lot more potent, and... Just that one simple change, or just pretty much the exact same play style, one different hero, just completely change the game around for VG Gaming, and that speaks volumes about the adaptability. And meanwhile, uh, Burning just did the same thing over and over, a Gyrocopter and Luna, I forget what other hero, um, but he just was not effective at all, yep. and um, they did, they didn't... They didn't account for Vichy just being able to kill them over and over and over again and mostly outcarry him in each of the games. So, um, yeah, just more veteran teams. I mean, not to say the DK aren't veterans, but they seem to not be as flexible as Vichy when it comes to strategies, when it comes to, um, you know, not just building Midas and farming up every game or not playing aggressively with Vichy. Sometimes you do have to play passively. Sometimes you do have to pick a Dragonite in mid and... And just wait for your BKPs and then start fighting instead of you know just playing very aggressively very early as soon as you get your phase boots or just get uh, one or two runes and uh, that's what Mushi likes to do. Um, not to say it's a bad strategy, but if teams can pick up on it and capitalize on it, for example, even versus Alliance, right? Alliance they have a pool of four to five heroes for Admiral Bulldog. They run similar carries on Lona a lot. Weaver, Priestess of the Moon, and there's your uh, namesake S4 heroes in mid with the Bat Rider as well as the Magnus, and teams figured that out, and we saw that at MLG, and they had a very, very poor group stage record, 4-4, four and four, and even past that, um, in DreamHack, they fared very, very poorly, just because everybody knows what they're doing, and it's not even that everyone knows what they're doing, it's like everyone's trying to do that themselves, too, because the recipe was met with a lot of success in TI3, and once, t once people play their strategy, they know what the weaknesses are, and they know how to exploit it, but teams that can keep on shifting and adapting and keeping their opponents off guard uh, and um, have very, very strong picks and bans like Sigma. Sigma has really strong picks and bans, and no one really knows what their strengths are. I mean, their strength is drafting, but like, as far as their play style, they don't really have a set determined play style. Sometimes they go for a very early Bane pick, a Potom pick, and those are pretty unusual in the in very high-tier play. They were able to beat out Navi in a best of five because no one no one really knows how they play and no one really knows how to beat them yet but sooner or later it will be figured out so you always have to keep your opponents on your toes and it's very important and best of five to do that love the insight my friend and a great way for uh everyone to await the beginning of our first game here ig versus vici gaming and victus gaming coming in as our second seed they will be at the advantage which means they do have the first pick advantage across the whole series and um for those who have wondered, I've actually been asked that a few times via Twitter, etc. And we'll see. Hang on one second. We'll see if 
we're going to have any blood on the soil early on. A little auto attack trading, but looks like just a little bit of early warding and both teams ready to pull back to their respective corners. But um, the seeding does matter as uh, we start one team out on Radiant with first pick and uh, Radiant always has first pick in the D2L. So, and then we just alternate after each game. So if it does end up going to a full five, IG will end up having first pick three times to uh, Vici's two. And uh, that's why, again, the seeding matters. Of course, other than Vici having to play through an entire uh, bubble race to get to where they are. So the horn blows and we're underway. Best of five action here on the D2L. Invictus Gaming versus Vici Gaming with a spot in Las Vegas at our grand finals at CES on the line. Let's take a look at our lineups. Faith going to be handling our Rubik. It'll be Alchemist, played by YYF. He is going to be heading out to this off lane. Puck will be handled in mid by Ferrari 430, one of the most electrifying mid players on the planet. Luna going to be played by Hal, and this is a very comfortable hero, very comfortable situation for him in general. Leshrac going to be played by Banana on the other side of the river. We've got Clockwork, played by ROTK, snagged that early haste rune, and just doing a little creep blocking for the moment. We can see he did cog a couple in as they drag behind super gonna be on one of his favorite heroes in storm spirit played a great storm spirit throughout play yesterday visage gonna be played by Finrear, and uh we've seen some phenomenal visage play in general from a number of players in a number of situations so we'll be keeping an eye on him for sure nick's assassin gonna be played by fy and that'll be joined up by siler and you know we actually have seen i can't remember i'm pretty sure it was you that that it was you that told me that uh, was it Vici that ran this, the great success, a gyrocopter Nyx assassin lane. There's actually a lot of cute things mm, you can do. Fanatic. Was it fanatic? Did. Yeah, there's actually yeah. some cute things you can do with this in terms of taking one early point in a homing missile. So YYF going to have to watch his tail pretty closely. Yeah, Nyx is a really sky high skill cap hero now, and I think only really good teams can use him to great effect. Like the timing of the carapace and uh, even just hitting impales is really difficult um, unless you're just extremely well versed in the hero. Or OTK coming, coming under some harass on bottom. His CS is not that great, 0 and 0 for him. Meanwhile, in the offlane on top, we have YIF, uh, solo, boots first. Uh, Alchemist, but he's not doing too poorly either. He is almost level two, but he has not really come under that much harass as of yet. In the mid lane, we have super match of us Ferrari. I say slight uh, edge to Puck, at least prior to level six, because he has better root control um, and he has slightly better damage, I believe, just a tiny bit. Um, and looks like Puck is just slightly ahead of that match of eight and four to six, super six and one. And we'll be like, to me, the big the big question is going to be this bottom lane, um, just because of how. In mid, he's going for a kill. Yep. He doesn't have anything skilled up yet. Rotating over. They are going to know the, the rune is gone. Fenrir spotted it, so Super may get defensive because of it. And, yeah, he's hanging back right now. He is, yeah, he knows something's up. Um, he had uh, help scouting the rune, knows it was taken by YYF, and he's playing very defensive because of it, even at the sacrifice of experience in CS. So, why He might lose his chicken, though. He has to be a little bit careful. Like, it, it, when you don't see a hero around, you have to be very aware, especially since it's very close to the three-minute mark. And the courier will make it in safely as YYF decides to depart just in time for his invis rune to uh, to expire. So bottles up on both sides. But again, this bottom lane, the clockwork, way. one of the, uh, depending on how many levels a clock can get. And right now he's sitting at level two, not too bad. He is, I won't say easy to dive, but since uh, before he gets his hook anyway, it is easy to get on top of him if you can outposition him and his cogs, as good a defensive measure as those can be, are not going to save him against a well-executed dive. And I uh, definitely want to see if IG wants to push this tower early or if they're just happy to buy time for Hal. And, and that's really going to be the question. Hal's build and just how geared for the mid-game or the late-game he's going to go with his approach. Will it be a Midas game or will it be a mid-game item kind of a game? Um, it looks like YF having some shenanigans around that uh, creep camp, and he actually won't be in experience range for that. Um, not exactly sure why he dropped the Isis spray there, because it uh, he w it wasn't really a ch didn't have a good chance of getting the gold, and he wasn't going to kill it in the time to get experience because of Fenrir's persistent harass. We can see a smoke now taking place as IG rotating Rubik and Lesh through mid. They may go ahead and give the old end around and try to put some pressure on the super. Being able to gank a Storm Spirit before he had six, very, very important in terms of just not letting him find his groove. Knight has come now, and that's a very awesome Roshan, by the way. There's another smoke gank, too. <laughs> there might be a three-on-three three at the Roche pit, or at the, at sorry, the, at the DD. 
And there we go. We're going to have the telekinesis on the super. Impales there. Only caught one splitter. They connect on super. He's down to half health. Nice silence. Got all three. And they're going to be able to vortex one. But with the rotation over, first blood going to go to Tong Fu. And Vichy not just giving up first blood. Can you say three blood on the ground? IG takes a huge lead. The timing very much on the mind of both teams at the same time. But one comes out way ahead. Make it three to zero. Yeah, that was just really, um, really, really close by VG. I don't think that puck's the best target. Firstly, he has silence, so if you clump around him, you're all going to get waiting and ripped. And here he has two points of waiting and ripped A slightly unusual puck build, but definitely good versus the Stolen Spirit. And then after that, they didn't account for the white rotation from YIF, who had a double unstable concoction, and they weren't able to kill him before the phase shift. So really nice play by IG getting up to that early 3-0 start. Oh, yeah. That waning rip from Ferrari, just devastating. Caught all three, and then with the rotation down of Fenrir in particular, just way too much damage output for Vici to be able to stand and do much but melt. So five minutes in, finally we got a couple of kills on the board, and this is certainly going to make Hal happy. Hal didn't have to do a damn thing for that. In fact, they've got three back in mid, so they might look to make something happen again. Right now, Faith and Banana waiting for an opportunity there is a coil now on puck super is not quite level six if they can get him out just a little bit nope never mind they're just going to go ahead and back off i think he should just neutral for six it's way too risky for him especially falling that far behind he can't die before six again or else he is going to need constant babysit in mid there is almost uh six minute rune about to spawn he does have vision on that but at the same time he does have to be very careful he will come into a satyr camp though which is very very uh, easy to kill for him so, lucky no mud golems. Six-minute rune spawns. That'll be a haste. And Super will be able to snag it. So, it should he be... He still has to be careful unless he gets six a minute, which it looks like um, Ferrari pushed out the wave, so he'll see it. Dyer's yep. And they may attack. go for it anyway. And, yep. Here comes Ferrari. He's got a coil. Yep. Spins it immediately. Super going to go ahead and jump, though. That is as fresh a six as he could have had and came just at the right time, so bit of a misstep there from IG just hoping he wasn't quite to that point down at bottom we can see clockwork is getting a fair amount of experience now finally playing catch up at about level three and a half at the moment but uh taking a look at the builds of the of the carries right now Hal's got a thousand gold in the bank he's gone phase bassy so he still has the option of going for a might if, if if he wants but it won't be a rush and it's actually the exact same thing from siler so this could be a very mid-game approach out of both carry players which i think yeah, oh, hang on faith Prompt Super to pop the haste ring. He's going to vortex Faith back. Get some damage. Impales there to follow it up. And the split earth. And they will be able to get at least one kill on the board. Now they're going to go for more. Here comes Banana. Cleaned up from long range. Super with the help of Finn Rear's soul assumption. Able to make that a two for nil exchange. So just like that, we're back damn close to even. Make it three to two. Yeah, that six minute rule was just so important for the Super to catch back up. And after that early death, already back in the game, two and one. Super is a very good Storm Spirit, though. Most of the time, he does play pretty passively unless he sees the opportunity. But once he sees the opportunity, he definitely capitalizes on it. And YYF, only four and a half on top, check, checking against ROTK. Both outplaners doing about the same. Uh, How is level seven, though? So they can potentially kill ROTK if he gets caught away from creeps. Looks like they're looking for an opportunity right now. Uh, it looks like. From ROTK's point of view, Howe is playing like a little bit aggressively. He like inch towards him, and that was enough for ROTK's alarm in the set to set up. Be like, well, I'll just check the aim in a rune if you are going to play aggressively because the supports just died. So after that, they're very likely going to rotate. ROTK picks up illusion runes on bottom, very useful for him because they can tank the uh, eclipse and they can just scout out where the supports are, both of which are very useful at this point in game. Very close on the gold graph. We're hanging at about 1,200 and a 1,000 experience in favor of IG. So certainly a nice little uh, dent VG was able to put into that lead. Still haven't seen a huge breakdown, just a lot of attention given to mid so far. CS tells us that Hal is in the lead, and we are seeing Faith begin to sniff around. There's a nice stack for Super, though. He has a triple stack. And, yeah, definitely allow him to catch up a little bit. Has to be careful, though, taking a bit of damage. A lot of creeps there. But as we approach 10 minutes now, ROTK getting closer to five, and Faith right there. We'll go ahead and lift oh, him. Oh, he's three HP. Oh, my gosh, Super, you got to be careful there, buddy. Yep. That was actually on bottom. Very well executed gank as Luna was able to get the Eclipse off following face lift. So a nice kill on him, holding him down a little bit longer. Now, this is a problem you can run into on Clockwork sometimes. He's a hero who doesn't necessarily need a lot of items, but he is a much higher impact hero. The quicker he can get the six and the more 
Um, more HP, the more survivability and versatility he has because of items if he can uh, get off to a decent start. So far, though, he's trailing quite a bit far behind. He's just level four at this point. Yeah, he just has to play a little bit passively. I thought he wouldn't die because of that illusion rune, um, but they have him as a reward here to scout him out. He just has to be really careful. If he sees Rubik, he knows he can get pulled out of the clock and immediately die, especially when Howe is level eight now. Checking his levels for Siler, looks like most the a lot of the heroes are about the same. Like Both mids are doing relatively equal. Um, both offlanes doing a relatively equal ROTK kind of on the back foot compared to YYF and both carries about equal. So uh, yeah, ROTK needs level 6 ASAP, but his level 6 is way more important than Alchemist's level 6. Alchemist is uh, just level 5, so it looks like they're right about equal ROTK checking a rune and um, stacking at the same time for a gyrocopter. He doesn't have to go HOD if his uh, carries can, um, if his carries can, or sorry, his supports can um, stack for him. And looks like... Storm, he needs to pick up the regen rune on top, but he's not even close. It looks like they're pushing already. How is in a very uh, peculiar position, though, but he has the support of his whole entire team. Yep. How baiting it back just a little bit. We are going to see Puck go ahead and bail out and head towards mid. And FY did manage to find level six as he soaks some experience there. And Fry will be able to find the rune. All of IG grouped together now in the Radiant side jungle. We'll see if they want to come back out and push. And I'm actually surprised this tower has not taken more damage than it has. And uh, they have, of course, put a lot of pressure elsewhere. But as of right now, um, looking to make something happen as a team, it would seem. And Super, hanging out in mid, could be in some danger. He's got a lot of enemy faces eyeing him from the high ground across the river a lot of warding and counter warding even going on face going to go ahead and show himself as they de ward now so might see the beginning of a big clash here in mid shortly yep and they get the reserve reward too so easy 50 gold but both of those wards are about to expire and that will alert nick success and that hey they do have a century wards bid time to gank somewhere else so it is not that bad of a loss for them for that observer and century ward to be lost at least they gained some information from it uh looks like Fenrir has finally hit level six already sending his familiars to that mid lane anticipating a fight there ig is wasting a lot of time though they're uh clumped as five as bottom they just clumped as five as mid and not getting anything accomplished while siler and the storm spirit are farming away the gold graph has dipped back slightly in favor of vg gaming follow those uh kind of half ass pushes from ig well, IG, at this point, they might just be biding their time for a couple of key items. Ferrari just finished his Blink Dagger. That's obviously going to be huge for them in terms of the war of... And that's what I think this game's going to end up being being remembered for, is this going to be the war of initiation. Whenever you have a Storm, a Clock, a Nyx Assassin, and a Puck all on the map at the same time, IG is going to be entirely reliant on Ferrari's Puck. And we're actually... Oh, never mind. Thought he jumped Dyer's on someone. Nope, he jumped on double damage. Right? But he, uh, IG is going to be entirely reliant on Ferrari, both for initiation and counter initiation. They're going to need very nice coils and waning rifts out of him. We are going to have a smoke out of VG moving now down towards bottom lane. Radiant Getting that blink dagger up on him, buying time for Luna. She's gone drums, Aquila phase, so it's a very mid-game approach for her. They don't expect this coming because they have, they have, they have the ward on mid. And wow, wow. nice stun. Yep, and Hal being pursued out. Oh, wow, he actually just hooked into the back of a creep, but Super will catch out Hal. So the gank is going to work, but now they have to watch out. The rest of the team's coming back. Ferrari not going to engage, so... That was a very high priority kill, and it was smart from Vici. They didn't smoke as five, so IG didn't really see it coming. They're like, well, what they really smoke as far, they kind of took the chance that he wasn't, and they paid for it. Uh, Super was sitting right here, which is in range of this ward over here, so IG didn't see that game coming, and uh, had all five been missing, I think they would have been better prepped. They would have probably had Puck TP down there and be ready to counter initiate if anything happened to Luna. And here comes IG, back on the warpath. Making their way over. And they're going to try to catch VG out. Faith is going to get eye on someone. There's a beautiful silence and a coil that caught too. Impale counter initiate on a Ferrari. He's going to phase shift away from a lot of the damage. But now Super back in the fight. There's the call down. And now the Eclipse. Super forced to pull back. They end up trading just one for one. And they're not done. Hal might have overextended. Will be caught with the Impale and the Soul Assumption. He's going to end up dying for the second time in as many minutes. FY forced to, to Vendetta away. Super though. Hit with a split earth following an unstable concoction. He joins the body bags. Two for two, the exchange. And now, yes, FY manages to grab one kill on the way out as he vendetted and then got the impale. And just like that, we're all knotted up. There's a hook, though, onto Banana. FY right there to follow up with the impale and another return kill going to go the way of VG. 
The unstable concoction from YYF has no follow-up, so he got a little bit of damage done. But Vici coming out ahead in the exchange here in bottom lane. Ferrari is back up and available. If he wants to try to make something happen, YYF is charging a concoction. And here we go. He's going to run around, look to pop ROTK, and will get it off. There's the waning rift as well. And do they have the damage? They should. And preemptively, nope, not going to jaunt to it. He got the cogs down, and he's going to escape. One auto attack from death. Siler's there to provide a little bit of covering fire. And this bottom lane has become nothing but a war zone. Looks like we might finally get a breather, or maybe not. Super could jump at any point. Ferrari's got eyes on him. He's got coil up right now if he wants to spend it. And we'll go ahead and rift him and jump back to the high ground. So just doing a little free damage as a splitter. Shot from the high ground. And Faith lifts him as well. Oh, and the coil. He'll snap it and jump back to the low ground to safety. What a wow. tango of abilities between these why players. He, why did he jump into them? He could have just jumped uh, up here. Came, that was... came up and gave Lestrack a high five for a well-shot split earth and then headed back to town, I guess. Seven to six, and this bottom lane still hasn't cleared out completely. Here comes FY. He's vendetted. Heard a, heard a, a hook into a creep. Now there's going to be... A, a big call down that only caught one target. It was all they needed. The burst was already there to bring down Howe. Now there's a telekinese face in trouble, taking a lot of damage up the tailpipe. ROTK right behind him. Whoa, oh, nice split earth. Is it enough? Faith, one more auto attack from a familiar is all they needed. The rest of them have to clear out as Vici plants their flag behind the tier one. And what was a quiet game has become nothing. But a bloodbath here in this bottom lane. Finally, it looks like the tier one's going to be claimed by Vici. Vici's just having way too good initiation with Super. Even though ROTK is missing his hook shots, I think he's missed like two now. Yeah. Uh, Super is just grabbing the right heroes, and they're able to take one hero immediately after a fight, and YYF can't counter-initiate in time. And Puck really has to get a jump on them. Vici had the, had the right idea with the smoke there. They also had a sentry behind the tower to make sure that IG didn't have vision of them. Um, so they knew that they were completely safe there. Also, IG does not have sentry wards over here, too. So Nick Assassin is just free to run in. And, I mean, Vici is the one with the sentry wards. So the supports on Vici are already playing way better than the supports of IG, constantly having sentries down when they're the ones with the invis here just to make sure that they can get the clean initiate off. If they can kill Puck or uh, Luna immediately uh, at the start of the fight, then Vichy should definitely win the fight, barring uh, them getting caught in like a four-man four, four man split earth, uh, waiting rift combo. But for the most part, their position has been pretty darn good, and Gyrocopter is very close with BKB, so him getting caught in that uh, sequence of events will not be that big of an issue for him. IG picks up the mechanism on the Alchemist, and they want to put it to use quickly. As YYF is joined by three, Ferrari, Faith, and Banana making their way up towards Siler. Let's see if they can catch him. They have him He's in so close to his yet. BKB. He just needs one, uh, two more creeps. And he'll get it. Nope, not quite yet. Here comes the immediate TP. Beautiful split earth and the silence. Didn't get the gold. There's going to be a coil. FY there with an impale to caught too. Can they follow it up? Mechanism has already been used. Nope, never mind. Just popped it. And here comes the counter initiate out of Super, but the Eclipse is going to be enough to force it back. In the meantime, ROTK has cogs down. Finn Rear clearing out to the side. Lesh will end up dropping. There's a solo assumption on the YYF. ROTK right on his heels. YYF has the unstable concoction charging. Imp Smith short. Cogs go down. He will go ahead and spin it on YYF. Got silent with a two and Ferrari. Cleans up one. Might even get two if they decide to counter initiate. No, here's the call down. How's going to be caught with it as will YYF. The familiar did a little bit of a stun, but Vici forced to pull back. So much action just to claim a couple of kills, and IG's not done. They're just going to take a couple of free familiar kills. That's a free couple hundred gold for them. Just a little bit of missed micro there from Vici. It looks like they will that go ahead so and pull important. back. If Siler shouldn't have bought back there, he didn't really need to. His cooldowns didn't really do anything, and a lot of the damage had already been done. He needs to farm his BKB ASAP so they yep. can't initiate on him like that. That was just such a crucial time. He was literally 20 gold away from that. And now he is going to come like two minutes after it should have. And they managed to take down the Tier 1 at top as well. Both of these teams just swinging from the shoelaces and throwing haymak haymaker after haymaker. And we can see the gold still very close between them. Right around 1,200, but separating them out in the experience about 3,500 in favor of VG. So VG maintains the advantage, but I'm anxious to see how IG is going to put Hal to use now. He's getting closer to his BKB. Might even, uh, let's see, no, probably not on the courier, no. So he's still got the full recipe to go, but he also got it up uh, later in his progression than uh, Siler did. So 
The fact that Siler bought back, as you said, he got picked off literally one creep kill away from being able to finish his BKB, that's going to end up buying enough time for Luna to be basically one item ahead. Yeah, that drums is actually a pretty big deal at this point, too. Um, especially since a lot of these engagements have been extremely, extremely close. That 200 HP as well, the aura for, the, for his whole team will uh, definitely help him out there in mid. Oh, Ferrari. Got caught out. It was a really nice hook from ROTK, and Super was there, but the phase shift followed by the waning rift, then the jaunt. Secured him enough time to not only get away, he actually did a fair amount of damage on his way out the door as well. So, nice attempt by Vici, but Puck not exactly the easiest hero to not only track down, but to keep locked down. So, they still trying to farm his BKB. Just needs 100 gold away from that. That item is just so important for uh, Vici right now. Still 20 gold. He's been in this position before. Another gank attempt out of Vici. They're going to run across a DD on the way. Quite handy timing for that. They saw Faith Faith pop the smoke. They know that he's there. They know there's a smoke gank too. Uh, this is really bad for Vici. They probably should have... Uh, oh, actually, Banana going to get caught out. Drops the sentry immediately. Bursted for half his health. Super's there as well. They will be able to get at least one. They were... No! Beautiful counter initiation. There's a great splinter. They end up losing Lesh, but trade one for it. Puck's able to jaunt away, but now the Eclipse and the Coil go down. And Fenrir eating all of that damage. Ferrari being um, being knocked down by the familiars. But FY, nice carapace timing. Might be enough to buy him some time. Don't think it'll prevent his death, and it won't. So that's a three for one. And I believe you had it right the first time. Banana. Oh, what a cog. Siler having to take the long road around now. Howl's right on his tail. ROTK there with the hook if he has to use it. Doesn't look like they're going to pursue, though. So another nice engagement. This time, though, going the way of IG and these two teams both fighting desperately to open up some kind of a gap and just not leaving any room for e for anyone. If they had Siler there, they could have fought like that, but they didn't. So as soon as the smoke pops, they should have just backed off. Fighting like uphill into this uncharted territory is not good, especially when it's that close to their T1 tower. So they don't know whether or not IG has Sentry Wars, but they were definitely prepared for that fight. And as you can see, the counter initiate from Puck and the mech from YMAF was able to save Banana at least until he was able to cast his, cast his Split Earth. So uh, Vici, if he had Vendetta maybe like two seconds earlier, it would have been fine. Or if they had just backed off, they would have been okay. Or if Siler had been there, but just none of those things happened. And IG definitely get the upper hand in that fight. And it bought just enough time for Hal to bring out his BKB right on time with Siler. So the fact that that BKB came out again, like the the equivalent, I mean, the, the thing, it basically bears itself out exactly in the gold graph as well. Um, the net worth graph, I should say. Um, the gap now about 2,300 that has been opened up in terms of uh, item lead. So the buyback plus a set of drums, the equivalent of the lead that Luna's generated so far over top of Siler. And looks but he like doesn't have ancient stacks. Luna doesn't have ancient stacks, so uh, Siler will be doing okay in that aspect. They're going to go ahead and go after the tower here in mid. ROTK's there if he wants to take a hook. Looks like he's trying to get in a position. And just going to show his face. Walked up, tried to deny it, but not going to work. ROTK caught with the lucid beam. Here comes Siler Ferrari. Blinked and thought about going for it. Here's Super now. FY undercover of Vendetta looking for a target. And Hal separated out. What's he doing? Way too far out. Oh, what a Vendetta. Got three. And all three will be caught in the call down as a result. IG just fell asleep at the wheel. Hal way too far out. Just, I have no idea what he was doing. The, the rest of his team was retreating. He looped around to right here and got caught completely. And an unbelievable... Any sentries. An no un sentries over here. Unbelievable for a vendetta from FY. Like, unbelievable. Caught two at max range, and it was a three-man call down as a result. Yeah, that was a really nice play from them. Either how should have BKB or support should have had um, Sentry Wars. They were just a little bit of a greedy play, I think, by the support suit. They, like, an urn is nice as an all, and Magic One is nice, but if you're going to lose a team fight, like, 2 3 0 because you don't have Sentry Wars, that is, like, the worst uh, 500 gold you can spend your gold on. So uh, they just have to be more persistent about it. They, ha they have them, like, everywhere else, too. One, two, three, but, like, this Sentry Ward in mid does not cover right under the tower. And yeah, the tower fell. And you, a lot of teams just drop it right in front of the tower range because it's just that important. So it seems like teams have somewhat forgotten how to play against Nyx. FY will be second again for Siler. And after that, I think Siler will be uh, pretty much back on par in net worth with Luna. 
And just look at this. The goal graph had just crossed zero back in favor of Invictus Gaming for the first time in a while. Now back in favor of Siler and Vici Gaming yet again. 11 to 15, and this is where Vici really does come into their own. I feel like Invictus is doing a good job of extending this game out. They haven't allowed Vici to snowball like they usually do whenever they're able to take a lead at this stage of the game. But the next couple of engagements, I feel like, are going to be very, very important, especially given the way both of these teams have built. Vici, again, having the lead, but 2,200 gold BKB phase Aquila up on Gyro. Luna's going to begin to outclass that Gyrocopter before long. And, uh, and how is in great shape with uh, they still don't have a sentry ward that close to the tower if you look at this it's only covering it here so that means luna can't actually attack the tower oh they have one over here but i don't know if they actually uh yeah they see it so they still don't have range of this area and luna can't go up and attack the tower so it's gonna be a very difficult push to begin with the bkb usage of luna is going to be imperative for them winning this fight um, and IG doesn't want to take the risk again. And they, they're kind of forced to five man though, just because the threat of Nick Assassin, Vendetta into Impale, into a Storm Spirit jump is enough for anyone to die on the side of IG. So they can't really split up right now. And they're feeling the pressure that they have to uh, fight fight Vici and take towers and not split up and farm. And that is one of the big things about having uh, a mixed success on their team. It makes their late game a lot stronger because the opponent can't farm safely. And the goal grab isn't uh, out of reach by any means. It's only oh, 2,000, no. but IG, they're kind of feeling the game slip away from them at this point. Yeah, the next couple of engagements, very, very important for both sides. And if IG can simply get it back in their favor as we get closer to 30 minutes, I feel like they're going to have the... Um, they're going to have the ability to move into the late game with a certain amount of confidence just because of Luna, her ability to push, her ability to split push, so on and so forth. Siler, of course, on the gyro. Gyro, very much a peak at Valley kind of a hero. Luna's much more even uh, in her progression, so he's still got a ways to go before he begins to feel super dangerous. Has yet to really begin building damage, but uh, adding the Helm of the Dominator, going to tank him up a little bit, give him a bit more survivability, allow him to farm a lot more safely and a lot more effectively. Hal, moving into the same side of the jungle, and, uh, yeah, looks like he's just going to take a couple of creeps here as well. was wondering if we were going to see Siler dip into the same neck of the woods. Doesn't look like that'll be the case. You can see how desperate IG is right now because they have one, two, three, four obs wards out right now. You never have four obs wards out on the map unless you're in a really desperate situation because if you have four obs wards out on the map, it means you'll only have at max two for most of the game. And, uh, like, having three, even four obs wards means you're just really, really desperate. And they're just looking for a good fight where they can catch perhaps Siler off guard, perhaps Super off guard, and then take an easy tower because of that. But Vici is not really giving them any opportunity. Siler hugging his T2, all the other four heroes hugging the T2 um, as well. <laughs> oh, ROTK. ROTK, of course. Yep. <laughs> as you were saying that, I was keeping an eye on him. He was basically poking his nose where it didn't belong, shot a rocket, told everyone where he was, and he got picked off. This is not bad for them, though. Like, yeah. He has 2,400 gold. He could have bought a BKB before and not lose um, not lose any gold. He don't. I don't think he'll be back up in time, but Super can pressure to T2 and then it's not a can pressure to T1 on top because those lanes will push uh, rather far up. They still have the Glyph up, too, I believe, and this tower is still a relatively healthy HP, so BC won't lose a tower because of that, and that's what all the ganks are about. And it looks like they want a five, man. They're going to move back up to the tier one. And Vici going to go ahead and rotate over to the tier one top. And they already popped the glyph. They do have a ton of push here between Lesh and Howe in particular. There's a stun from the Visage Familiars. Catching Y way off twice. Acid Spray goes down. Trying to zone him out with Black Cannon and doing a fair, fairly decent job. And in the meantime, Vici takes the tier one. So right now the maneuvering war going the way of Vici. And they're going to be able to bring back the full full force of their composition to this bottom tower when they want to. Super could show up at any moment. Super has had that Orchid for quite some time. And uh, and he just really hasn't been as active as I think we're used to seeing him just because of the way IG is playing this out. But he will be a huge factor coming up in the next few engagements, make no mistake. This tower is going to get denied to one more hit from the Siege Creep, and uh, IG's will waste so much time here. But there it goes. There's the deny. And now IG is like, well, what do we do now? We just lost a T1 uh, where they got one super and Siler were farming in the meantime. And now we're forced to split back and farm. So um, VT is still getting the better hand of all of these uh, maneuvers. And IG, they're trying to maneuver, ma uh, maneuver around as five, but VT just really nice with uh, the threat of the Nick Assassin, the split put from Siler and super. It's just a little bit too much for them to handle. And IG, they're kind of forced back to farm, but do they really nice have to Nice 
Mario with TK. Oh, he yeah. hasn't hit any heroics this game. And that's his BKB gold too, so that's a pretty big turn of events. And now there's a medallion up on Visage. Uh, they have the T1s down in mid and bottom, so definitely a great time to do Roshan. Uh, can IG really contest this? They kind of just... Oh, they do. They're going to have to. FY scouts it out, though. Yep, FY in a great position. Spots Ferrari. Ferrari throws the orb. Roche will end up dropping. No jaunt to it. They're going to take it anyway. And FY just basically running distraction. Now they're going to jump on top of Ferrari. Ferrari Vortex back. Here comes the Eclipse as the fight breaks into two halves. We see VG eating a lot of damage. Siler doing what he can, but the BKBs keep Siler and Hal both up and fighting. Super not going to pursue back above the high ground. FY still there as well. And ROTK, very low health, doing what damage he can. They end up trading one for one so far. Super going to eat the unstable concoction. Four man! Call down, and now Vici's on the warpath. Split Earth going to delay things a bit, but the BKB and the hook on to Hal. That'll seal his fate. He's done. Four for one, the trade, and only YYF still up as he scrambles for the well. Could not have been a worse sequence of events for IG as they not only lose Roshan for free. What great play coming out of the one casualty they had. That was FY. Basically, Roshan dropped, and he did nothing but run interference. He hit an impale. He hit a vendetta. Used Carapace. Basically, he just drew their attention, and IG caught completely with their pants down following the reach, the hook, the uh, the ball lightning, the, the jump from Super. Just great play all around, and Vici has now taken a commanding lead in this game. Gyro covers called out has been really, uh, they've been really good this game. A lot of times it's uh, due to someone hitting a nice impale or a hook shot cog or a pull by Super, but still, you usually do not hit that many people with call down. And it's generally seen as a zoning tool. It's like, well, if you want to stand in it, you'll get owned, but it's really easy to dodge. So just stand around a little bit and sacrifice a little bit of damage. But if you can hit four heroes like that, that is almost guaranteed win team fight, especially when they don't have any BKBs except on Luna. And that was a very smart play from ROTK to just have had his eyes on a prize he had his hook shot he had 300 hp but knew knew that if he hooks how even if he dies for it um it's definitely worth it and how he was on top of farm or actually he is still on top of farm in terms of net worth but he keeps on dying over and over four and five on him compared to the one death on siler that is really really devastating for ig who pretty much have all their eggs in one basket in the luna carry and right now ig has got to be feeling desperate has to be feeling a sense of urgency and we can see them grouping up here in mid the gold graph about 7,500. We're now into a big experience lead. And Luna's net worth, as good as it is, simply isn't enough to keep up with the uh, combined farm of Super, Siler. They have the, uh, have the Aegis as well. ROTK has his BKB and is already on his way to a four staff. And Super's going to try to jump with a haste and unable to find a target, though. So Vici doing a great job of just zoning it out. Now they're going to spot Faith. There's the immediate telekinesis, and he manages to grab ball lightning and make it back to safety. So Faith, with some fast fingers, saves himself there. He needs that orchid. He should be able <laughs> to get orchid out faster than he can steal and then use the thing. But uh, Super has been playing well to this very well this game he already has his bkb up too so we're talking about three bkbs for um for the side of vici gaming and nix assassin has his blink dagger too so things are looking really really dire for ig blink dagger up on nix as you had mentioned isn't it honestly he has to be the mvp this game fy has just had an unbelievable game he has i mean the presence of the hero just in any composition like this is going to be of an of intrinsic value but what he's been able to do it's one thing to hit a good to hit a good impale it's it's another thing to hit th two and three man impales like it's nobody's business before you see a blink dagger come out before you see a mobility item Man. At the same time, the IEG supports have just been pretty lazy about sentries, too. So they just, like, let him shine. But he's taking full advantage of it. Um, yeah, I think him and ROTK, he's missed a couple of hook shots. So whatever. Fenrir has actually been playing really well, too. But Visage will be Visage. We're going to see VG try to catch IEG asleep at the wheel. And there they are. They're going to go for it. Oh, here we go. There's the impale, the jump as well. They're going to manage to grab FY. And the call down's there. Not even necessary. Could have tracked him down regardless. Couple of free kills. BKB popped on Super for that. I don't think they're going to get enough out of that as much, or nearly as much as they wanted. ROTK, in fact, going to be forced to BKB. Now on both sides, the BKBs come out. And how eating a ton of damage. There's a jump from Super. Buyback. Forced out of YYF. Faith eating the soul assumption being chased down. Oh, what a coil! Got everyone, but can they capitalize? They managed to pop the Aegis, but no follow-up. Ferrari did absolutely everything he could have. Caught a whole team with that coil. 
But still, and he has hex too. He hex super one as soon as he jumped in. Yep. And that might be enough. Oh, there's the jump following the impale. Super going to be telekinesis. He has not been fast enough. He's going to pay the price. Cold downs there again. We'll catch a couple. We're going to see banana drop again. Super continues to go back and forth. Faith, in fact, stole just the whole ball lightning. So he continues to jump. And it's been a fun game out of Faith, if nothing else, on that Rubik. But so far, got to give IG credit. They held, they held serve pretty well there, all things considered. Yeah, they, they did hold pretty well. And Familiars may die again. He only has one Familiar left, so he's been feeding a lot of Familiars, but at the same time, Salar didn't die in that fight. He will have his Butterfly, and how again, died. Uh, but he has his Butterfly, too, so still very even farm between these two carries. And yeah, we haven't seen too much out of Ferrari. He hasn't died that often, though. 3, 2, and 10 on him with the Scythe of Vites. That's going to be really important, because as you have seen, Vici has just gotten the jump constantly on IG with the Impales, with the Storm Spirit jumps, with the Hook Shots occasionally and uh, if IG can just burst down Storm Spirit before he can pop his BKB, then they can probably win the fight there. But that is a pretty tall order considering they have a mech and they have nice counter initiate with the clockwork hook shot. FY, undercover of Vendetta has a double damage rune as well. Might find Banana, and I'm actually surprised he didn't double back there. And now he will be spotted as he walks in range of a sentry, pings it out saying, hey, they got vision here. So they know there's a sentry somewhere in the vicinity. But, um... 15 to 25. Chat trivia. What D2 Ultra participant is the only Eastern player with over 10 career wins as Storm Spirit in Pro Dota? That's... I mean, the obvious guess is super. Right. I'm trying to think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I know Nahaz, though. That's a little too on the nose. I don't think he would ask that if it really was super. He would just probably pop that yeah, into... Yeah. He would pop that into a general factoid. Uh, I don't know. I'll go with the obvious... You're going to go super? Yeah. Uh, I honestly, I honestly, I I don't know. I'll say Ferrari just just because he's also on the map. We'll find out, though. <laughs> so, you stumped us, Nahaz. We, we, we've had a couple of good ones where you thought you, you would stump us, but uh, and we got the answer. So, you got us on this one. Hopefully, the chat will know and know without cheating. Both teams taking some time to farm up. We'll take a look at the goal graph. Still very heavily in Vici's favor, despite IG's ability to hold their Tier 3. 10,000 gold in their favor coming up between 15 and 20,000 experience. So let's put you in the captain share for IG. What's your best hope? Just try to sit back and play defensive and allow yourself to farm back into relevancy, or is this more a solution that requires, or a problem that requires a bit more of an active solution? active solution I think uh, you gotta pick people up with a sheep like get the blink sheep on storm spirit because he's really the only one that can stop you as long as you face shift the uh, Nick assassin uh, impale or just silence him out and then you should be able to win the team fight just throw all your stuns on him unstable concoction as well as a split earth and then just run in with a lucent beam or sorry eclipse on a BKB Luna and have him go to town and then once you have super down the other people should fall relatively easy easily I think they need a BKB also on the alchemist or a pipe, uh, one or the other, to deal with a massive amount of magic damage and stun lock that they have. Um, so I think the IG can still win the team fights, especially with the hex out and especially with no Aegis on, on them. Uh, eight minutes has elapsed. Looks like two and a half minutes until the next respawn. If Vici gets that, though, especially if they give it to Storm Spirit, then they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Ferrari looking for a kill on Super, but just narrowly dodges the storm, the smoke gank. And Super's just been doing a fantastic job of dodging the ganks. And usually when we see Storm Spirits come under this much pressure, they just die constantly and are unable to really get a uh, Orchid BKB timing at a reasonable pace. But Super doing a very good job, first with the Invis uh, gank and then a couple of smoke ganks, too. So I must say that um, he's been really standing out. And not dying is an accomplishment when you're in this situation. Very obvious smoke gank attempt up here at top. Whenever you see the enemy carry just decide to solo push and solo farm a lane all the way up into your own jungle, you can bet he has team, a team below him. So very slow reaction. VG playing very defensive. They will come in just to defend the tower. And it looks like IG, not willing to take a fight on those terms, will go ahead and bail out now. So... How has his butterfly done? Looks like he's going for a Manta style next on the side of VG, though. 4,000 gold in the bank of Siler. He's got his own butterfly. Question's going to be, does he want an MKB or does he want to go for something like a Satanic? Go ahead and tank up. Definitely MKB. Yep. I'd say. That's kind of, I'm, I'm on the same page with you. Um, at this point, though, they really haven't had a whole lot of trouble just taking fights off of IG in terms of pure damage. So that was kind of my thinking is if he just stays in the fights longer, 
Um, yeah, he's not in any danger of dying though. Like he's six one and nine. The only time he died was right before he got his BKB in the team fights. That are all all their eyes are on Nick Assassin and Storm Spirit. Those are the two real big problem heroes for them. And no jaunt off of the orb. There's gonna be a hook though that'll catch Banana and the Silence Orchid on Ferrari. He's brought back. They're gonna try to reinitiate off the mechanism. Good impale again. Caught YYF. Good dodge of the soul assumption by Puck. YYF cleaned up. And Ferrari and Faith can do nothing but just try to run away. And ROTK hook shot. Yep, R -O they can just take this, this, and then take the. Uh, I think they should take the uh, Roshan with this. They shouldn't take the T3. Uh, they're important here because still have the Puck and the Luna, and the other ones are going to respawn pretty quickly. Vici has the options open. Will they push through or pull back? They don't know that Roche is up. I don't think they do anyway. They have no way Radiant's to scout it. So, and it was it's two and a half minutes. So, it, at maximum, it's going to spawn thirty seconds more from when he spawned. So, yep. they don't have to wait that long. They have a gem too, so they can take down all these wards. Will they see this one though? They have a reward. Yep, they will. Nice. Yeah. That's that's what you need to do though versus a gem. So I think that's smart warding by whoever plays on IG, but just not enough because of the flying vision of the familiars. And Roshan spotted out. This should be contested. Ooh, this is going to be. This is a pretty important illusion too. If they like going on with the blink sheep, then that would be pretty big. But now they know it's illusion. If he used that a little bit better, he can just bait it out at the Roshan pit. Now this is a very important fight for both teams. Roshan, number two. They scouted out. See, they vacated the pit. Now they're out of sentries. They both use sentries in one place. Now they don't have a uh, vision of this area and they can't deward it. That's just really sloppy support play from IG. And IG maintaining control of the western side of the pit. Vici poking around, trying to see what they could find. Been a really good game, by the way, um, out of Fenrir. Another great game out of a Vistage player. 9 2 and 10 for him. A Scepter, Mech, and Medallion up at 40 minutes. And how? Right now, Super can just like bait, bait a uh, BKB out on how. Oh, and there's a scythe jumped on. There's going to be ROTK. Oh, he got the illusions. There's going to be a call down though. Cogs go down as well. BKB's up on both sides. However, the damage too much as Hal drops the nothing but physical DPS. And there's the vendetta that kill on the banana. Be. That's five oh, down. What a disaster. They they could have done that like 10 minutes yep. ago, but now it's just a little bit too late. They have too many items, and it was just a very nice counter initiate by uh, the Nixess and ROTK and Siler there. They just dropped everything that they have, and e even if they had killed Storm Spirit, they would have just used uh, too much. But that was the right that was the right way to take a fight. You blink, try and kill Super. Um, and hope you don't take too many losses, but they were unable to take a uh, few losses and they were unable to kill Super, so easy GG coming out from IG. But that was still much better game than I expected under IG. They held on par with VG first 20 minutes of the game, but VG just coming out way on top in those 20 minute plus engagements. Super and uh, FY MVPs, I'd say. Oh, no doubt about it. Absolutely no, about, no doubt about it. Another great game from Super on Storm Spirit. We saw him do well on uh, on that hero yesterday fy though really just made things happen he was involved in 25 of the 32 kills vg and mass that's just how much of a high value hero he was out on the map today and uh siler doing his job on the gyrocopter and once again you know this is just such a tough position um when you go up against vg just given the way they've been playing over the last few weeks they just take any sort of advantage they can get themselves in the first 20 and make it so hard for you to come back because they work so well with that kind of momentum and now with a one game win momentum ig playing from behind not the position you want to be in against this unbelievably talented beachy gaming squad 41 minutes 34 seconds the official game time final kill score was 15 to 32 so beachy doubling them up by the time all was said and done game one behind us can't wait to get game two rolling to see if ig can tie it up and get themselves back to even force the series into a best of three situation i'm your host here in ac chambers the voice you hear on the other side of the line that's been really new special thanks to Nahaz has as well our stats guy has been lending you all the fun little factories and all that kind of stuff but more than anything thanks to you guys it's been a great season so far and we're about to bring the eastern division to a close as ig drops game one and now VG only two wins away from punching their tickets to Vegas. IG, though, well, they're a team who's, you know, been on this stage before. They know how to play from behind. They know how to play with the lead. They just know how to play some donuts. So we'll find out if they can force a tie situation or if VG can take another game and put themselves just one win away from heading to our grand finals. Stick with us, guys. We'll be right back here on the HyperX D2L.